Hey folks, Jay Haskamp here with Frontier Precision. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to another one of our uh, tailgate technology series. Today's video, uh, we're going to talk about slope staking. So um, we get a lot of questions about it. So we're just going to go through it a little bit in depth to give everybody a, a good idea of, you know, what is it? Why do we do it? How do we do it? What part of the process it's done in? Um, we're going to go through a couple different scenarios. We're going to have a uh, version of this where we work off of a road model. And then for our Learning Lab subscribers, we're going to go a little bit more in depth and show you how you can slope stake without a road model. So the big key to slope staking is just knowing the elements of your cross section, um, knowing what the grading contractor is looking for in terms of what they want to see on the stakes, and then just knowing what information to put on the stake. Okay, so um, you're going to have two different scenarios. You might have a scenario where you have a fill slope, which means you're going down to your grading PI, um, the shoulder point or the angle point of your road, and then you're just filling in to match. In that scenario, we're going to give our um, offset and our fill information to the grading PI to establish that slope. Or if we have a scenario where we have a cut slope, meaning we're going down, we're going to put in a ditch, we're going to cut back and match into an existing with the cut slope, then typically we're going to give our um, offset and our cutter fill for the contractor to our hinge point, which is basically the toe of that cut slope. Okay, So not too hard to do. Just make sure you have the right information. Make sure you know what you uh, what you need. And uh, we'll go through it with you and show it how it's done. All right, so let's go get started. All right, so here we are at the farm today. Um, I got a nice field here, we just took the beans off, so a uh, nice area to work with GPS today. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you um, how we're gonna slope stake. What I did on, in TBC, I topoed this field and I just kind of pushed a, a fake field road uh, through the middle of this field. And I'm gonna show you um, what we're gonna do when it comes to slope staking um, in terms of what it looks like, how we do it, what information we need, what we give to the grading contractor, and how this all looks. So on this end of the road, is where we're going to start. This particular end, we have a cut slope, which means we go down from our road, um, from our grading PI down, we have a ditch, and then we're cutting back into the existing. So in this, this typical scenario uh, where, we have, where we have the cut slope in the ditch, we are going to find our daylight line, which means that's where our grading um, matches into the existing ground. That's the point where we're going to pound in our stake. And on our stake, we're going to give our offset and we're gonna give our vertical difference down to the toe of that cut slope. That's the hinge point that you'll see on the data collector. So what we're trying to do is from that stake and that position on the ground, we're gonna give an offset and elevation down so the contractor knows how to define that slope. Depending upon the type of slope it is, I think in this scenario, it's a three to one slope. It should be easy math. So if we look at the vertical difference that the data collector gives us, if we multiply it by three, it should closely match what our offset is. So that's just a way we can check things in the field. All right, so let's look at this part first. And then when this is done, we'll go and we'll show you typically what contractors are gonna need for when we have a fill slope. So what I'm gonna do is I have my road loaded. I'm dialed into VRS. I'm just gonna start out the uh, staking routine here. So I'm gonna go to the menu button, stake out, roads. I have my uh, southeast uh, field road RXL file here that I made. Our settings look good. We're gonna hit next. And then now we need to determine where, whoops, determine where on this road, I'll just zoom out here for you. You can see just a nice straight long road. We're gonna determine the point that we're going to measure. So you can see here, we're right at its station. I believe it's six plus zero, zero. And I'm gonna select my catch points. So once I pick that, you see it highlights in blue um, on the map screen. I can see my little target uh, where I'm at. So I always have reference to where I am on my road. Um, on the right hand side, it says, okay, you're at station six plus zero zero on the cross section. The string or the point that we're gonna be staking is GG catch, so that's just grading grade catch. That's what I labeled it when I made it in TBC. And then it gives us our information. So our cut slope's a three to one, fill slope's a four to one, and our ditch width is six. We're not gonna put any construction offsets here. Typically, you don't do that when you're slope staking. You're just pounding a slope in at the catch point. Um, you might go through another routine. I know a lot of DOTs will go out on the right of way line and put in what we call a key stake, which has all of your offsets and vertical differences to various um, PIs along your cross section. Slope staking, we're not doing that. We're simply just defining the daylight line 
and giving the slope to the grading contractor to build that road. So we're gonna hit start. Turn my e-bubble off. All right, so on my screen it says, okay, you need to go to station six plus zero zero. On the bottom, I have some directions. It says forward, right, vertical distance. So this is reference to my road, okay? So I'm at the end of my road. So if it says go forward, it means it tells me which direction along my road I need to go. And then if it tells me left or right, it's, it's saying based on that direction or the direction of your road, you need to go in or out from the alignment. I can hit the plus symbol here and I can see a station offset. What I typically like to do is I'm gonna go into options and under my display, I'm gonna change my orientation to north because I always kinda of like to have a reference to where north is. And my deltas, I'm gonna to change to delta grid. And when I hit accept, notice how my screen changes. Now it's telling me, okay, go northwest or south, east, or vice versa, or any combination thereof to tell me where to get um, to find my point. So I'm gonna get, uh, I always like to face north when I do this. So go north, oops, I went way too far. North wants me to go west. All right, let's see, west two tenths, south two or three. And also what we're looking for when we do this is not only to get our residuals um, in the proper spot so we're in the right location horizontally, but we're also checking our vertical distance. Now, there's gonna be some differences between what you're measuring on the ground and what that daylight may be based on your model and design things like that but ultimately what we're trying to do here is we're trying to get that to where that cutter fill is is zero now technically if we're just doing dirt work and we're under a tenth it's probably no big deal but we don't want to see any um, large numbers there okay so i'm going to level up here go south a little bit more All right, wants me to go west a little bit. All right, so we're pretty close. I'm not right on again. We're just doing dirt work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna level up, hit measure. Let's see, I'm gonna give it a name here. Set this up, we'll just call it uh, 500 and we'll call it uh, catch point or stake, whatever you want to do. And I'm just going to do a rapid point just to speed up the process, all right? So, level up one more time here. Measure. All right, so now let's save this position, all right? So you can, first thing you're going to see is your stake delta. So this first box is saying, okay, how close were you to the position that you're trying to find? So it's telling me, okay, in, ver in, in terms of my stationing, I was about 500 off backwards, so 500 off towards the, the beginning of the road. And my horizontal offset, I was out, of, out or actually I was in, because I'm going this way, I was in about 300. So I can sit here and try to get that better, um, but just notice that those numbers, the smaller they are, the more accurate your, your math in your head can be when you, when you check your slopes. The vertical distance to road, um, that's 100, so that looks really good. All right, so again, earlier, as I said, when we just started this, this section here, when we're working on a uh, cut slope where we have a ditch and we're cutting back into the existing the offset and vertical distance we're going to give on on the stake at this position is going to be to our hinge point which means the toe of this outer slope that we're defining so we don't need to do anything fancy here on this particular screen I can see my horizontal distance to the hinge point is 1.4 feet and I have a cut of about four to five tenths okay so if you do the math is say my cut is let's just let's just do some magical rounding here but I say my cut is uh, 0 0.5, we'll round it up, multiply that by three, gives me 1.5, so it's pretty close. So you have to account you know, how much you're off with your deltas, with your horizontal uh, stationing and offset, but it's just a real quick, simple math check to make sure it's in the right place. So I'm gonna palm my stake in, I'm gonna write station six plus zero zero, catch point, um, offset to hinge, 1.42 feet, vertical distance or cut of 0.46, and that will give the contractor enough information to know how far and how far down and how far out this slope goes to the bottom of that ditch and then back on from there, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit store. I'm gonna run down and I'm gonna do one more station up the road here. So we're gonna do um, station six plus 25. And then when we're done with this, we'll move down to the other end of the road where we're plowing through the ditch down here and I'll show you what the, uh, the fill slope looks like. So I'm gonna go down, we'll hit this and then we'll move down to the other side.
All right, so hit really close right now. You can see my Delta station is uh, 0.009. My horizontal offset is 0.01, and my cut is 0.003, okay? So at this stake, I'm gonna pound it in. Six plus two five, catch point, offset of 2.76 feet to hinge, uh, fill of 0.687. Observation stored. All right, so you can see how easy that cut fill um, scenario is, or I should say the cut scenario is for the cut uh, the cut section of our road where we're having the ditch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move down to the other end where we're gonna be going through the actual ditch here. Um, we're coming off the existing road. We have a real nice steep, deep ditch back up to our field here. And we'll see when we have that, uh, that fill slope what that looks like, because we're not gonna give it to the hinge point, we're actually gonna give it to the grading PI. So we have to know what that looks like in our design. We have to know what node that is. Um, when I create it, I actually call it GG for grading grade underscore PI. So I know that that's the point I'm looking for. And I will show you um, how we can find that on here, right? So let's move down to the other end and we'll take a look. Okay, so here we are now in the other section of this. Um, <clears throat> we're in this deep ditch here. So what we have is to my right, uh, we have our existing road that we're going to tie our field road into. We're going through this ditch. Obviously, we have to put a culvert in. We're not going to get into that. But we're going into this ditch, and we're going straight up to the field. So the other end of this field is where we were at um, earlier. So what we need to do here now is knowing that we're plowing this road through, there's not going to be a ditch, right? We're just tying into the existing ditch. So here's what we have, um, a situation where we have just a fill slope. We don't have to worry about a ditch and a cut back in. So. I'm at the uh, beginning of my road, so I'm at, looks like zero plus uh, 50. So I'm gonna grab it here, you can see station, zero plus 50. Again, grading grade catch, cut slope, fill slope, ditch. There is no ditch here, but that's just part of our side slope definition. So I'm gonna hit uh, start, and now it's gonna start telling me where to go. So it says I need to go south 10 feet, west a foot. So I'm just gonna start backing up here. Let's see where I'm at, once it kicks in. Go two more feet and east a couple tents, south a few tents. Looks like we gotta go east just a tad bit more. All right, looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit measure. All right, now my point numbering um, got messed up, no big deal, I'm just trying to show you in a video how to do this, but now you can see our, again, our Delta station um, backwards, uh, looks like just under, just over, just under 200s. Offset, we missed it by about 400s, so again, not that big of a deal. We're looking at our fill close to zero. Now, this is where it can get confusing because in the scenario up there where we had the cut slope, the ditch and the cut slope, we're defining it to the hinge point because when you have a cut slope in the Trimble software, it defines the toe of that slope where it meets the bottom of the ditch as the hinge point. When you have a fill slope, that's not necessarily the case here. So since that isn't the case, we have to do something else. Remember I said earlier when we were up there, we we're looking at our grading PI. So that is basically where the PI or the angle point of our end of our shoulder down into this fill slope, which now projects down. So what we do in this situation, um, you have to make sure you have this defined properly in your road model, but we're gonna hit report and when I hit report, it's gonna give me all of my offsets and vertical distances to all the PIs or the, the, the angle points within my cross section. So notice when I look down in the list here, I have an item called GG for grading grade underscore PI. So this is actually what I'm putting on my stake. So I'm telling the contractor that I'm at the catch point or the daylight line and I need to go offset 32.9 feet in and I need to go up 8.2 feet and that is my grading PI, okay? So if I do the 8.2, knowing that my fill slope is a four to one, roughly multiply that by four, I get that 32.9 so I can check my math. So I'm gonna put my stake in, uh, station zero plus 50, I believe we were at, catch point, offset to grading PI, uh, 32.9 feet, fill of 8.23 feet or 8.2 feet, whatever we wanna put in there, how precise we wanna be. That's what I put in the ground here. That's what the contractor needs to know. So that is slope staking in a nutshell. I'm gonna go ahead and accept that and store. 
Okay, very easy to do. A lot of people overthink it. We get a lot of calls during construction season on how to slope stake. Not a very hard process. It's just understanding your road model, your cross section, understanding what you're actually staking and understanding what information you need to put on that stake to give the contractor, okay? All right, so that wraps up this portion of the video. Um, this is working off of a full-blown road model with everything predefined. Um, for those of you who are not subscribers to our Frontier Precision Learning Lab, this is where I'm gonna leave you. Um, those of you that are subscribers, we're going to move on and I'm gonna show you another trick on how we can accomplish this exact same slope staking procedure that we just looked at, but without a road model and only alignment, all right? Thanks for watching this video. Go to our website, frontierprecision.com for more uh, information, frontierprecision.com forward slash learning lab to get more of these extended videos. And also for some of our on-demand training, we're gonna be working on doing uh, an on-demand staking class here in the near future. That's frontierprecision.com forward slash on-demand. Again, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time. Observation stored.